And now it's time for us to discuss more of the headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us on the line from a different location. Good morning, Adam. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Lena. I'm at a relevance, uh, uh, relevant, a, a, a relative's place at the moment. So, yes, it is a different. <laughs> if I can speak properly, uh, yeah, I'm at a different location today. That just for today, though. Just for today. Well, it is kind of the long weekend for majority of our listeners, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, it is my only schedule for today, so mm. I thought I might take the opportunity to spice things up a little bit with a different background. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Adam, on this special occasion with a rather special background. <laughs> All right, uh, let's jump into our keyword news portion of the day. We're going to try to clarify some of these major headlines for our listeners, and this is our first pick of the day. Overseas trip. The presidential office has assessed President Yoon's recent overseas trip. Clearly, they want to sidestep away from the hot mic moment and talk about, well, diplomacy. What did uh, they have to say? It certainly was. It basically means that uh, the presidential office kind of deems the overseas trip as kind of a success Mm -hmm. uh, and trying to kind of sidestep, as you say, those criticisms that surround that trip. Uh, Spokesperson Akimana said that various efforts are being made as to overcome the fallout from the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, that's where a lot of attention was paid to if uh, there was any going to be a, a solution to that issue mm-hmm. when you did visit uh, Britain, uh, the U.S. and Canada. What you see the comments is trying to, of course, defend criticism surrounding Yoon's uh, trip. It is also being seen as a way to divert attention away from, as you mentioned, Yoon's hot mic uh, mm-hmm. moments, which is uh, taking a lot of uh, the attention from uh, the actual key focus of the trip, rather, and is becoming kind of a political uh, sticking point at the moment. Uh, Kim said that the IRA issue was discussed with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and that they both understood Korea's concerns. She added that relevant talks are also uh, underway. And she also noted that an IRA revision proposal has also been submitted to Congress to allow certain tax benefits, whether that will uh, come into fruition remains to be seen. But mm-hmm. basically, she said that's one of the kind of the outcomes of what uh, she deems as kind of a successful negotiations with those top uh, leaders and officials. Mm. Uh, Kim also said that Yoon's trip served as an opportunity to seek better international cooperation on North Korea issues as well. And she also noted that a currency swap deal was being positively looked into by both Seoul and Washington. This, of course, comes amid this volatile uh, foreign exchange uh, markets, the weakening one as well. There's mm. been calls for such deals to take place. Nothing has been signed as of yet. Mm. But the presidential office uh, seems that uh, Seoul and Washington are kind of heading in the right direction in that, mm. uh, in terms of that deal. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, the top office believes the president's trip was a success. Mm. Uh, and uh, weighing in that, the Foreign Minister Park Jin has also refuted criticism that Yu's trip was what critics have been calling a diplomatic fiasco. So there's been quite a lot of uh, mm. mudslinging between the ruling and opposition parties regarding the overseas trip. And of course, the presidential office and the ruling party are basically busy to try and defend uh, from those criticisms. All right, we'll leave it there for now as we move on to our second keyword of the day. Armed Forces Day. So the South Korean military showed off high-tech weapon systems on Armed Forces Day. This also comes amid increased North Korean missile tests. What was on display particularly? Right, so there was quite a lot happening uh, during this, but the Defense Ministry held an official ceremony marking what has what is the 74th Armed Forces Day at the Kedongde military compound. The theme was strong defense, robust military based on science act and uh, technology. Uh, the ceremony was attended by President Yoon sung yeol as well as the Defense Minister Lee jong sup and top military brass as well. It was an opportunity for South Korea's military to kind of show off state-of-the-art weapon systems such as the Chunmu uh, multiple rocket launchers, Army tactical missile systems, surface-to-surface ballistic missiles, mm-hmm. and the Hyunmu-2 and Hyunmu-3 missiles, which are part of the mm-hmm. Uh, what's known as the kill chain system. Uh, in the troop formations on the ground were elite forces of the at the vanguard of the UN administration's defense reform 4.0 initiative designed to make the military stronger and smarter based on uh, technologies such as AI. Uh, key weapon systems mobilized for the ceremony kind of highlighted Seoul's push to beef up its so-called three-axis system 
which is basically aimed at countering Pyongyang's weapons threats. Mm -hmm. Also on display were surveillance assets such as anti-artillery radar systems and unmanned aerial vehicles, drones, in other words, mm -hmm. as well as Pac-2 and Pac-3 interception systems, uh, K-2 Black Panther battle tanks, as well as K-9 uh, howitzers and Korean assault amphibious vehicles as well. Aerial assets on display uh, included the F-35A stealth fighters, as well as F-15K, KF-16 and F-A-50 uh, jets and others. Uh, the military also released a video explaining the three-axis system and showed for the first time a clip of the firing of its latest high-power Hyunmu ballistic missile, described as having the largest mm. warhead weight. Uh, the name Hyunmu actually refers to a kind of a mythical beast described as the guardian of the northern sky, for those mm. who don't know. And the latest version, uh, a variant of the Hyunmu 4, is a surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missile. Because of its massive size, it mm. is referred to as the beast missile and mm. reportedly can carry an estimated uh, nine-ton warhead. As I said, it was the first time the military released a video showing the launch of a missile that may be used mm. as a means of retaliation should North Korea conduct a nuclear weapons attack. Mm. With that, we move on to our third keyword of the day. Investigating Moon. So the state audit agency has notified former President Moon Jae-in of its plans to question him about the administration's alleged mishandling of the case of a fisheries officials killed by North Korea two years ago. So what's the latest on uh, this impending investigations? Right. Well, the Democratic Party says the Board of Audit and Inspection emailed and phoned Moon at the end of last month to accept a planned written investigation on the case. And the BAI also sent written inquiries to the former president uh, as well. Now, the DP officials, however, said Moon was displeased with the BAI uh, plan and sent back the email expressing his discontent. Uh, the state audit agency refused to kind of give any other details on the pending uh, issue as well, of course, because it is being investigated. Right. Uh, the case is being revisited, of course, under the UNO government uh, after the Coast Guard in June overturned its earlier conclusion that he was killed while attempting to defect to the north. Uh, the Coast Guard said it had no concrete evidence behind that conclusion announced during the Moon administration. And that, of course, this, this issue has also become kind of a political hot mm -hmm. potato between the ruling and uh, opposition parties. Uh, intelligence officials under uh, Moon at the time are also accused of mishandling the case, including fabricating related uh, intelligence reports as well. Mm. Uh, Pro-Moon groups are expected to hold a press conference today, in fact, to kind of criticise the BAI's move. Mm. Uh, but, of course, this isn't the end of it. So the investigation is ongoing. Mm. Whether Moon will cooperate down the line remains to be seen. We'll have to keep our eyes open. All right, let's move on to our fourth key word of the day. Trade deficit. So the latest data shows that Korea may suffer a record trade deficit of $48 billion this year. Can you give us the details, Adam? It just seems that we can't get a, a break, really, from these economic <laughs> data. The, all the data are referring to kind of negative outcomes, mm. negative impacts, unfortunately, and uh, this is nothing new. Uh, that's according uh, to a report by the Korea Economic Research Institute. That would be 132% higher than the previous record of just over uh, $20 billion uh, back in 1996. That was a year before the Asian financial crisis broke out. This is also the first time since 1997 for Korea to have negative trade balances for six consecutive months as well. Uh, Kerry said a week only one usually would have boosted exports, but raw material and energy, and energy prices uh, are rising at a faster pace, which is kind of offsetting that uh, effect. And mm -hmm. Korea has seen trade deficits for six straight months since April. Mm -hmm. uh, as of September 20th, the year-to-date trade balance is negative mm -hmm. $29.2 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, exports are also at risk from what many expect to be a global economic slowdown as well. So there's many external factors uh, that's impacting this. Uh, exp uh, uh, experts and watchers say policies aimed at stabilizing the currency need to take place, such mm. as currency swaps uh, with major countries and mm. stabilizing the supply chain um, as well. And just simply the, the dollar has just been strengthening so much right. recently as well, which is making it difficult to kind of 
make any uh, or come up with any solutions to the mm. weakening one problem. Uh, some are also calling for lawmakers to pass revisions to the tax law as well to lower corporate taxes in order to stop companies' uh, profitability from deteriorating. Uh, any further as well. Something's got to give, but there is no room to give in any of these departments. Mm. Uh, giving tax alleviation, what would that mean for a government standpoint? Anyway, uh, you're right. The narrative has remained largely similar throughout the year with uh, mm. no really simple solution in sight. It seems that this trend will continue likely into early next year. That's a the conservative forecast. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, pretty much the same for all the other kind of gloomy Mm. economic data as well, unfortunately. It's just the times that we're living in at the moment. (laughs) It's tough. (laughs) All right. With that, let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Tons of fraud. So there's been an increase in the number of uh, property landlords failing to return uh, tons of deposits, which is a significantly large lump sum of money. Now, this has also led to cases of insurance coverage for such incidents spiking. Yeah, that's right. Insurance coverage and and uh, subsequently insurance fraud as well happening as uh. well at the same time. Uh, but do take this data with a grain of salt because they are coming from lawmakers and mm. they, of course, have a political angle into when they uh, release this data. Uh, one, uh, the PPP's Tai Jun released data showing money paid out to tenants who subscribe to uh, the Housing Finance, uh, Finance Corporation's insurance plan came to uh, just under 100 billion won in July. That's 125 times higher than mm. that uh, of 2018. Uh, now, the HGG's program is basically a housing deposit refund guarantee insurance that gives refunds to tenants who haven't got them from landlords. Mm. Uh, data from a Democratic Party lawmaker also shows that more than 550 billion won was given out by institutions, uh, the top three, Uh, to pay for unreturned transfer deposits in the first seven months of the year. Uh, The damages of this so-called, what's known in Korean as gantong transfer, it's translated roughly to tin can transfer, have expanded to studios from uh, multi-household residencies. Basically, they're offering all these transfers, but they're not really giving them back. So basically, it is a scandal, basically. Mm. Uh, And such fraudulent cases have been increasing in recent years as well, which is of particular concern, and the government has been trying to crack down on such cases, but Mm. unfortunately with little success. We always knew that Tonsei would eventually fade out, but this is kind of a rocky way to uh, fade out if you think about it, increased uh, fraudulent cases where it's it's a worst case scenario if, let's say, someone borrowed a large sum of money from the bank to get Mm. this Tonsei and they can't get the money back. And not only that, their loans are more expensive to return to the banks, for example. Exactly, especially at a time now when the central banks are increasing the key rates, interest rates are higher than they were ever before. So, Mm -hmm. of course, that will add to the burden of these tenants who are trying to pay back those loans as Mm -hmm. well. I mean, the whole overall idea of Chanse is trying putting in a deposit Mm -hmm. and getting that same amount of money back. But Mm -hmm. a lot of people, of course, take out loans for it. And of course, loans are for free. There's interest rates that are tied into it as well. Mm. So if they don't get the money back, they have to mm. basically come up with a way to get that money back and, of course, pay the interest on that as well. All right. That is the current situation, it turns out. I think you raised a really good point about a political angle. When these data are released by whom is also to be taken into account. Thank you so much, Adam, for today's coverage. Enjoy your holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you too. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.